We've officially made it to the end of 2023 and what a year it's been. If you've been following along on some of the other social media platforms, you've seen that we've experienced quite a lot this year. We're gonna break it down month by month and share what we've seen. In January of this year, we were still building the van and we decided that enough was enough. We needed to go out and go get some adventure underneath our belt. So we met up with some friends in Big Bend National Park. That video is live, go watch it. We had a fantastic time. We went to Mexico, we rode a donkey. I had goat tacos. Fantastic experience. From there, we went to Carlsbad Caverns, which up until this point is still one of our favorite national parks that we visited. One of the most underrated and beautiful locations that we've ever been. A lot of people said that you only needed a few hours to experience Carlsbad Caverns. We spent two full days there, 16 hours, just walking around the cave. Fantastic, just so pretty. This trip was our first time living the van life. Um, we learned a lot and yeah. we made a lot of mistakes, <laughs> but we also had a few little victories. Um, we put down our thoughts in a video. You can watch that here. But overall, we had a really good time. That got us excited to come back to the cold, snowy Colorado winter and finish the van build. February. And March. April. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> what we thought would be just a couple weeks to finish the van turned into three months. Um, we had a lot of work to do and we were fighting that Colorado winter. So we spent all of February and most of March fighting freezing temps, snow, and all the things you can't have when you're trying to paint or glue or do anything productive when you don't have a workshop. But, uh, was well, Andrew? Yeah. Andrew? Andrew's an angel. Yeah. Well, he saved us. That's true. So the the missing heater piece that <laughs> accounted for a lot of the fails in our first week of van life, uh, we went to Longmont to pick it up. Andrew, who uh, runs Rex Overland, let us know that he was opening a workshop right near us and offered us a place to rent so we could finish the van build, and we took him up on that offer. <laughs> we spent three, almost three months. No, it wasn't no. quite that long. Too long, because it was expensive, but we it spent a expensive. lot of time overstaying our welcome in his workshop. <laughs> but we were working hard, 16 yeah. hour days, 18 hour days, every day of the week, and we finally finished the van, yeah. so. It was a wonderful day <laughs> when we drove out of that workshop. workshop. I don't even think the van wasn't done, but we were done. <laughs> so we, yeah. we uh, felt so bad. We told Andrew it was going to be like a few the weeks. A couple weeks. weeks and he's like, how much more time? We were like, Ugh, we Ugh. felt we, terrible. But we ended up hiring him to do a lot of the work that we were struggling with. And now we have a beautiful finished van. Yeah. So at the beginning of April, we went down to Colorado Springs. We said our final goodbyes to my mom. We did our taxes and then we hit the road. April continued. <laughs> we officially left to live full-time in the van and start for real, for real on our journey to see all 63 U.S. national parks. And we had to retrace our steps. Where'd we go? We had to go back to Guadalupe Mountains, <laughs> uh, which is the north part of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, when we originally went in January, our goal was to see Guadalupe, but there was a snowstorm coming in. Uh, Carlsbad was closing the days we had originally planned, so we had to do a, a really big shuffle, which mm -hmm. meant backtracking, waving to Carlsbad on our way to Guadalupe. Um, but there, we climbed to the top of Texas. We did, which was a fantastic experience. That video is coming soon. Um, I think that was one of those things where we realized we spent three months in a workshop and not working out because it was a hard hike. <laughs> it was a real slap to the face to kick off the journey. That's um, true. But fortunately, the next few parks that we traveled to were not as crazy. We went and saw White Sands in New Mexico, which was unbelievable stunning so beautiful we got there super early because it's a photographer's dream mm -hmm. there right the skies are beautiful the sands are pristine we got there and the entire park was closed because of missile, missile testing, testing. <laughs> but that wasn't that big of a deal because we came back in the middle not the middle of the day but towards sunset and the, the sunsets there are unlike any anywhere else on the planet yeah. and that alone was worth any journey there so we went to White Sands, then we made our way into Arizona where we went to Saguaro National Park. Um, <laughs> turns out I love Saguaro. <laughs> um, we had a good time there. And then that was about 
what was it, maybe two or three weeks on the road, yeah. and then we got a nice break when we went to Phoenix to visit your brother. Yeah, we spent the week hanging out with my brother and his family. He's got two boys. Uh, it was a really welcomed, ex welcomed like kind of stop in the trip. We were able to do laundry. We were able to get a bunch of really good food and just have just a- Just like relax, or, which is, seems ridiculous because yeah. we were only on the road for a little bit, but it was like right at the point where we needed laundry. Yeah. We wanted that sense of normalcy, which again, not a good sign considering that was the first less than a month of the trip, yeah. but it was great. It was great to see him, spend time with the boys. And then we we're back on the road. We went to Petrified, which is also in Arizona and the Grand Canyon before making our way into California, hitting up Death Valley and Joshua Tree to round out the month. May! <laughs> we went to Channel Islands National Park to kick off the month and Joey's birthday. And this was the first national park where we had a reservation that we were chasing. So a hard deadline where we had to be there because we had the opportunity to camp on one of the islands. And in that time frame, it wasn't really easy to get <laughs> those reservations. So we knew we had to be there and that was one of our hard deadlines. We had a really good time there, but Joey had a flight to catch right at the end of that trip and we were in the middle of like a weather system and they they told us when we took the boat out there that they may not come back for us <laughs> if the weather is bad. <laughs> Which is and, like a scary thing to say. They're like, we may not yeah, show up. Yeah, you may up. have to camp extra. And we had more than enough food because we overpacked. That's the theme of uh, our journey. <laughs> it wasn't that we would be out of food or have any inconveniences while on the island because it was lovely. It was the concern that Joey wouldn't make his flight to go to his sister's fiance's bachelor party. So we wrapped that trip up early, which was a little bit of a bummer. So instead yeah. of spending a few nights out there, we cut it short, we came back, um, and then made our way to LAX to get this guy to Texas. When I was out in Austin, Katie got the opportunity to hang out with her dad. I built a kitchen. <laughs> uh, my dad and I worked together. We were renovating one of the properties he manages and we uh, got to do a kitchen. It was really fun bonding time. And then we picked Joey up from the airport, spent a few more days there, unpacked the van because we overpacked. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Uh, so we needed to purge. So we emptied out a significant amount of clothing, utensils, extra like bowls, all these things were lofty dreams that we would be making gourmet meals every dinner. <laughs> um, but just realized they were taking up space and we had to shuffle things every morning to drive. We're just moving things from place to place instead of having a nice clean van. So we dumped a bunch of stuff and then made our way through all of the California national parks. Yeah. Here we go. We, okay. I gotta look at the list because there's a <laughs> lot in California, but we've officially checked them all off, which is kind of cool. Um, we left LA and made our way north to Sequoia and Kings Canyon. Uh, California had a really intense weather system this winter mm -hmm. and caused a lot of damage within the park. So this was kind of like the first stop in one of the California parks that a lot of what we wanted to do and what we originally planned, we couldn't do because it was closed. Yeah, but this was our first taste in what was to be kind of a trend moving north uh, where we didn't have access to most of the park, uh, which was disappointing because there were things that we wanted to see and things we had researched and wanted to do and weren't able to. But at the same time, we also had a really good time visiting them with what was available to us mm -hmm. to see. So I don't think it was like a miss entirely, but it gives us some incentive to go back, that's for sure. Right. Yeah, so we saw Kings Canyon, Sequoia, Yosemite, Pinnacles, and that was a surprising one. I think we enjoyed that more than either one of us was expecting. Yeah, Yosemite, Yosemite at that time was kind of like right on the right on the crest of becoming very crowded. Um, they're also dealing with a lot of flooding, so I don't think I think we couldn't wait to get out of Yosemite. And Pinnacles was just kind of like hole in the wall national park that like no one really talks about. And it was probably one of our favorite hiking trail hiking national parks that we went to. Yeah, and we, we got to see a condor. We got to see a condor up close. I think it was just one of those like hidden gems, even though it's not hidden. But it was something that was unexpected. And there was a pool, so that was yeah. exciting. Yeah, I went swimming in a <laughs> national park in a pool. Yeah. So after Pinnacles, we made our way to Lassen. Lassen was another California park that did not have a lot of. Well, it had nothing open. We were able to walk and see the uh, some sulfur and some uh, yeah. geothermal activity, I think is what it's called. And that was it. There was only one 
ranger mm-hmm. who had spent the winter there and was telling us that the snow at times completely covered the building. And we could tell because they had carved out a cave into the visitor center. Uh, he but, recited a poem for us, though. That was fantastic. He did give us a poem. So when our last, <laughs> in, <laughs> our last in National Park video comes out, check out the poem because it was actually really cute and really yeah. enjoyable. We liked him. From Lassen, we finalized California with Redwoods, Redwoods. National Park. Which is your favorite. Yeah. (laughs) I really liked Redwoods. The hiking there, the trees, the like foggy coastal vibes. It it was one that I really, really want to go back to. I just think I like the Pacific Northwest because that was was the start of it. Because then we went into Oregon and saw Crater Lake and just saw it because everything was closed. (laughs) Because <laughs> they yeah. also had snow. <laughs> but Crater Lake was the first like time that we like really slowed down in National Park. Like we like threw our hands in the air. Like we can't do anything we wanted to because ninety five percent of the park is closed. Yeah. So we went to the lodge and had breakfast and spent the entire day just looking, well, looking at, at the it. lake. <laughs> Which like ended up we at the end of the day we're like we just spent eight hours like staring into this blue crater. Yeah. Because it was breathtaking. Yeah. And yeah, we couldn't hike, we couldn't go anywhere. It was just you can look down into it and that was enough. Yeah. It was really, really enjoyable. Yeah. That was a nice way, a different a different way of experiencing a national park that up until that point was not the normal. Yeah. And that capped off what would have been like a nice chunk of time. And then we did another pit stop with a friend. We caught up with one of Joey's friends in Portland and spent a couple days with them. Before we dropped the van off in their parking lot, in their driveway, (laughs) said, thanks for looking after Clifford. We are getting on a plane and heading to... Hawaii. Hawaii has two national parks. We only saw one on this trip. We went to Hawaii volcanoes, but we didn't do that in May. We only went to Hawaii in May. So... June. June. <laughs> Boy, that was better. I like that. Liked was it. nice. In June, we were still in Hawaii, uh, and we met up with my parents and my brother. My brother lives on the East Coast. We don't get to see him that often. He doesn't have a lot of vacation time, but he spent it with us, and I was really grateful for that. It was nice to have the whole family together on a vacation, which we hadn't done in ages, um, and then to see a national park and give them a taste of <laughs> what we had been doing, all of the national parks up until that point was really fun, yeah. and Hawaii itself that national park was super interesting. The only downside was that Uh, less than 48 hours after we landed back in Portland, um, the volcano erupted (laughs) and we had missed it. And it was really, really disappointing because we so badly wanted to see some of the volcanic activity, the lava, um, and to know that we had missed it by literally just a tiny bit over a day. (laughs) It's like, darn. (laughs) But that leads us into... (laughs) It was was emotional. I I may have cried. We were in Forks, Washington, and she was crying, (laughs) not because she couldn't see Edward. I'm not a Twilight girl. But we had started the journey back north, and in order to get to where we were going, which Joey will get to in a minute, we had to drive through Washington and we met up with his mom, Wu, who you've seen come in and out of this frame, and her cat. And it was really fun. We had just gone from a trip to see my family in a national park and we were now at a national park with Joey's mom and the pets. And I think that was a cool way to kind of end our Pacific Northwest at that moment, um, to spend some time with her in in a national park too. Absolutely. But where were we heading? (laughs) Alaska. (laughs) Um, This was like the last few days in the U.S. for a while before we jumped into Vancouver, made our way up to the Sea to Sky Highway to the start of the the Alaska Alaska Highway. Highway. The long drive. This was something that we were really concerned about. Just everything you read online is like remote, no gas, like all these things. So we were, we were stressing. Yeah. Um, There were wildfires. It was a really active wildfire season in Canada. We were dealing with the effects of that with heavy smoke, low visibility, just not sure of if the road would be open when we got there after driving for days and days and days to get there. Fortunately it was, and we did uh, an amazing road trip on the Alaska Highway, realized that it is way more accessible than people lead you to believe online. (laughs) Um, When we put that video out, we'll really break it down, but I think that was a huge surprise. Yeah, Uh, if you wanted to do that in an electric vehicle, there's no issue at all. There are EV charging stations everywhere. Spread out enough to where if you had decent range, uh, you would be able to do it. And hint, hint, nudge, nudge, maybe we'll do that one day. Um, (laughs) But then we got into Alaska. First time either of us had been to Alaska. First time 
above the uh, Arctic Circle that month. Yeah. For you. Yeah. <laughs> um, are we still in June? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we are. It's still June and oh, we're yeah. in Alaska. So we had said Channel Islands was one of our hard deadlines that we were chasing. Um, Katmai National Park was the other really big hard deadline. Katmai National Park has a location called Brooks Camp and it is so famous for brown bears at a waterfall. So if you've ever seen a brown bear catching a salmon on a waterfall, 99.9 .9 guaranteed it was taken at Brooks Camp. And those Camping reservations, lodge reservations go onto the, the market on January 5th. We missed that day by only three days. I yeah. think I made the reservation January 8th and we got the like the very last camping reservation for the entire season. Yeah. So we were like, we have to be there by this date so that we can get to this. Cause if we miss it, then you can only do like a day trip and that stuff sells out as well. So it was like, it was a whole thing. Yeah. But our very first Alaska National Park was Katmai, and it was unbelievably cool. We <laughs> we saw so many grizzly bears, and it was the beginning of the season. It wasn't flooded with like 50, 60, 70 bears, but we still saw, what, 15 or we so? St we still saw some, and I think that it was, <laughs> we get to Alaska, and then we immediately fly somewhere where we tent camped in brown bear country, <laughs> protected by a very thin electric fence that the ranger was like, I think I did a decent job this year while some cubs broke into the campground <laughs> like the night before. We could have died. <laughs> um, no one's died there, I looked it up, uh, <laughs> because of the camping with the brown bears. They are acclimated. Yeah. They're used to people at that point, but not necessarily in like the bad way. They're just so, there's so many salmon that they ignore their instincts to fight each other. And then they also don't eat the people. Which is so that's good, good for us. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. The only thing that I would say I was a little heartbroken with was we had no salmon. The salmon run was late. We looked in the little like visitor's book and on the days we were there the previous year the salmon had come to the falls yeah so there were no brown bears at the falls and i so desperately wanted to see that and didn't but again an excuse to go back yeah we'll definitely be back yeah so that kicked off alaska and then from there we where'd we go denali, denali. and it's so only fun fact only <laughs> one out of three people actually get a see denali uh we saw it multiple times it took us a few days. We were there days. for a few days and it was the very last day when we finally saw Denali. And we had spent all the days looking around like, it's where is it at? There. It's like it's gotta there. be this giant mountain. Cause it's, it's tall and it's, I think it's the tallest mountain mm -hmm. on earth from like stem up. Yeah. Cause like Everest is like the highest peak, but Denali from like the ground up is the tallest. Yeah. So we were expecting to have to be like cranking our necks, looking into the sky. And when it finally came out, it was like really far off in the distance yeah. and it wasn't as tall as I was expecting, uh, which it felt really foolish about. <laughs> we were also like, I think the closest we ever got to it was like 45 miles away or something. I think something. it was more than, I think it's like 70. So yeah. in the perspective from where we were in the yeah. park, like it just, it's not as like, Oh, there it yeah. is. But when we went from Denali up to Fairbanks, you could see it. And it, then you see it towering over the yeah. landscape. Um, but we had a great time in Denali. We did an, a ranger led off trail hike through the permafrost and like- So fun. It was wild. Yeah. That was probably one of my favorite ranger led hikes that we've done Yeah. in all of the parks this entire year. Yeah. It was super interesting. And there's no snakes or ticks. So I was out there just, in the bushes, like running around with the, without care in the world, other than, you know. Bears, bears. <laughs> moose, wolves. Um, so yeah, that's two Alaska National Parks down. In and June. Then, oh, it's still, no. it's no, that was June. 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 No, now it's July. So July. July, July this, this is a fun one because we did something that we'd only listened to on podcasts, like read you have to do online never experienced in our life. We took a bush plane to Gates of the Arctic National Park and Kobuk Valley National Park, which is basically really the only realistic way to get there yeah. is to hire a pilot. Yeah. Um, we were very fortunate on the 4th of July to hop into an itty bitty plane with some like plywood on the floor and just enough space for us this, and the pilot. The, <laughs> I, it's so like, we'll show videos of this plane, but like he was telling me about this plane and then he said the year that it was built. 
1952 was when the Cessna was built. We we're flying on this itty bitty plane that's 75 years old. But someone who we did we didn't know. We we called we had called around trying to find someone who would fly us there. Because we're again, we're only in Alaska for a certain amount of time. Joey's sister is getting married, so we had another hard deadline in August that scrunched our Alaska time frame down. And we were like, we need to get to this park we have to find a pilot that'll take us. So yeah. there were so many options that we will get to, into in this actual video for th these parks, but we found someone who has literally said, do you want to go tomorrow? Yeah. And we said, yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, sure, <laughs> let's get on. We don't really know you. There were like decent reviews and fingers crossed we make it. <laughs> uh, but it turns out, he was amazing. Fantastic an pilot. An amazing pilot. The the plane experience, I had my like emotional support cargo net that I like white knuckle gripped the whole time. But it was fun. Like, I, that plane was fun. I got on Facebook Marketplace later <laughs> that night seeing how much these planes were and I'm like texting my my brother-in-law, I'm like, we're buying planes. We're gonna be plane people now. <laughs> Uh, plain people. Oh. Yeah, so we had a great time. We visited those two national parks. It was an incredible experience. Gates of the Arctic still ranks as probably the top, the top national park we've ever been to. Yeah, it was and quiet. The, there, it was, you are thousands of miles from people. Yeah, you are literally get out of the plane, let the engine cut off. And it is a silence unlike anything I've ever, I've been yeah. to remote places in the world and nothing sounds like Gates of the Arctic. Yeah. And it's a, a sound that changes the way your brain works. It just is, there's so much peace. And I feel like that makes it the number one national park. It's just such a special place. Yeah. It was beautiful. I cried. I, I don't know, the emotion of the entire experience the entire day and like what we'd accomplished at that point. Landing the plane on a riverbank and avoiding trees, <laughs> adrenaline, all the things. Yeah. It was overwhelming. But I would say that Gates of the Arctic, that trip was ungodly expensive and threw every sort of budgeting out the window. But oh, by, yeah. like I would go back, I would save up so much money to be able to step foot there again yeah. and highly recommend it. All right, moving on because we, we did a lot this year. Um, we left Fairbanks, we drove back down to Anchorage where we had to kind of rearrange plans again. We had a few more national parks to get to that we could not drive to mm -hmm. um, and some decisions to make on how to get there. So we were our next national park, Lake Clark National Park. There are two ways you can fly in or you can take a boat. And so we were going back and forth whether or not we wanted to take a boat across and see the coast or fly in and see Lake Clark and uh, <laughs> and go through the, the mountain range there and get to see sort of a different side of the park. Yeah. And we decided on flying in. Another bush plane. Actually, this no, one was this better. One, this one was a real, it was another like private plane-ish, like public, but not, it wasn't it wasn't a big airline, but it was like an airline, small plane. Um, and we went, we flew into Port Allsworth to do a little bit of hiking. We wanted to rent a canoe, couldn't find the canoe place. Um, but this park was scary <laughs> for the plane ride. This oh, We yeah. had just flown on a bush plane through some weather, landing on the beach, like dodging, like doing all this crazy stuff. And then we get into this plane that's like nicer, pressurized cabin but you can hear all of the alarms go off when yeah. it's doing like caution terrain. It was very scary. We had listened to a podcast of some other people who had gone to the national park and actually got into a plane crash there. So that wasn't really a good feeling. Yeah. Going. It was probably a poor choice in podcast to listen to like two days before. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, yeah, that's where our plane crash happened. And like how they explained it was there are like three different channels that are all like vertically stacked on each other that go through this mountain range and the one that was below them didn't see them. It came up and clipped their tail. And so as we were flying through that same thing, we look out the window and it's like, there's a plane below. Yeah, so I hope plane everyone there. is like, plane there. know that. Plane there. And the pilot's like, oh yeah, there's so much crazy wind coming off these mountains that you have to like hit it at the right angle or else it'll flip the plane. <laughs> And I'm like, please don't tell me this. I'm yeah. already afraid of flying. Um, so while it was interesting to see it, I don't think we would uh, do it again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would go to that side of Lake Clark anymore. I'd go to the the, yeah, the other side. I think the, the other side. I, while that plane ride is probably the scariest I've ever been on, 
it was also beautiful. And I think the best oh, yeah. part of Lake Clark was flying through the mountain yeah. range. So yeah. it's like, oh, you have to suffer through Ooh. the very scary flight to get there. But mm. we did get cheeseburgers and fed. And fed a dog. Yeah, fed a dog, some part of the cheeseburger, who escaped out of the house to go <laughs> straight to the cheeseburgers for tourists to feed them. I love that, yeah. love that. All right, from Lake Clark, we actually went to Kenai, uh, which was also, I would say. So this is my favorite Alaska National Park that isn't Gates of the Arctic. Or Katmai. But uh, I love them all. Alaska's amazing. Okay, so Kenai Fjords is in Seward, and it's a mix of fjords, but also mountains, ice, like glaciers, like all this stuff. So we hiked a glacier. We did a boat tour. We got to see a lot of wildlife. We saw whales, moose, everything. It's such a great park. Yeah, it was stunning. It was definitely the best campsite of the trip by far. Oh, yeah, free. One, beautiful. Two, beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Kenai was probably one of the coolest national parks that we went to. Uh, from there, uh, we were on our way out of Alaska. We had two more national parks. We didn't know how to do the last one, Glacier Bay. Um, so we scratched our heads for a bit. We called around. Nobody could really get us in. Weather was changing. We're it was a multi day trip. Yeah. So you could, Alaska Airlines flies into Gustavus, which is the town that leads you to the park. But the time frames for all these flights, you can't fly in and fly out. So it would have been at minimum a three day adventure where we didn't have Clifford. Right. So we would have been paying for a hotel, paying for the flights and paying for a boat tour to actually like go into Glacier Bay. So we decided to table that until after we went to Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which is an experience in its own. Yeah. What's <laughs> the name of the highway? We took the M McCarthy Road, yep. which is like an old train route, essentially. So there's still, what are they called? Like the spikes, like oh, rail railroad, railroad spikes that come out from the dirt and blow people's tires. So they basically are like, make sure you have a spare, make sure you have a Garmin, like yeah. expect to take many, many hours to get there because you're going to be going slow. Yeah. And it did take us quite a long time. It took us a while. We also stopped a lot because like there were like bald eagles and we'd stop and then we saw moose and then we would stop and then. I yeah, I, I think like we probably couldn't have really gone much faster Not because it was already like, um, but we did see other drivers run into issues with yeah. tires. So we were very grateful when we got to McCarthy. Um, we camped uh, for a few days there. We hiked on a glacier. Fantastic. We hiked down an old mill that's held together by rope in 14 stories, and they just kind of let you in there, which was a wild experience. Yeah. Um, we ran into one of our friends from New York City who now lived there. Yeah, that was a wild experience. We we lived in New York City from 2013 to 2016, um, went to a gym, and she was someone who went to the gym with us, and we were sitting there having a drink in town, and it was like, we know you, and we did. And that was really, really surreal and quite strange. It was really nice to kind of have a blast from the past. Yeah. And we got another drink, had some food, um, and then we again are on a tight timeline because Joey's sister decided to get married. So, so ridiculous. <laughs> so we left you. Wrangell St. Elias, we became Junior Rangers, which was fantastic. And then this was the final decision. We were heading out of Alaska. We were getting back onto the Alaska Highway and there was, there's a fork in the road where we could have taken another highway down to Skagway, rented another plane, and done like a flyover of Glacier Bay. And we were like, does that count? I don't know. We were going back and forth. I was talking to the company and I was letting them know, like, we want to go to Glacier Bay and like, we want to be guaranteed to go there. And they were saying, depending on weather, sometimes they just go to a different glacier that's not in Glacier Bay. And we were like, that would be a very expensive thing to not go to the actual park. Yeah. So we opted as we were driving by this fork to be like, we're not gonna do it. We're leaving Alaska, only doing seven of the eight, and we will get back somehow. So we got to Whitehorse, we called my parents, and we were like, we didn't make it. <laughs> we, we, uh, we then said, you know what, let's take a cruise. So yeah. we booked an Alaska cruise right then and there to get back to 
Glacier Bay National Park later on in the year. Yeah. So we'll get to that as we move down months. So we had a few more days of July mm -hmm. and we got into Washington where we actually were able to check off all three Washington National Parks. Yeah. So we went to North Cascades, which was a fun one. We did a nice hike there. North, yeah, North Cascades, we'll talk more about it, but it's super confusing because everyone says North Cascades is one of the, like, the least visited national parks, but they don't tell you that North Cascades National Park is surrounded. It's a park by, unit. So yeah. it's like national park boundary, but then like the, the NPS also runs the other areas. It, uh, here, here's a map. <laughs> um, so, it's the least visited because not many people go into the back country that is North Cascades National Park Park Boundary. Right. But it was busy. Yeah. <laughs> the parking lot was full. The visitor center was chaotic. The There was no parking at the trailheads. We thought it was going to be this serene, yeah, like, like quiet, nice little, little hike. We had just spent six weeks in Alaska where there are very few people at these parks. And then we were just like, Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, it was too much. Also, it turns out it's at elevation. And Alaska's yeah. not at elevation, so we were huffing and puffing. Yeah, we were hikes. struggling. We decided to go on like this nice little six mile hike. And like at that point, like we were doing a bunch of like big 12 mile hikes in Alaska. Like we're feeling good. We were thinking we were cool. Struggled. And we we're like, what's going on? And then we look down and we're like, oh, we're like 7,000 we, feet. Yeah, like we started this hike at 7,000 and it like goes to like 95 or something. Like, yeah. That was pretty funny. That was a <laughs> it made us realize that maybe we didn't get as fit as we thought we did in Alaska. Um, from there, we went to Olympic National Park, which is one of my favorite in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. The variety is unreal. We got really lucky and got a camping permit at the Ho Rainforest, which means we were able to get up early without crowds and, yeah. and go in there. Everything about Olympic is just Amazing. Well, you'll see that more in our video. Yeah. And from there, we went to Mount Rainier, which was really fun. Yeah, Mount Rainier was beautiful. We did some great hikes. One um, of the like one of our favorites of the trip as well was Mount Rainier. We went to what was it, Panoram Panorama, Panorama Point, Point. Yeah. Um, on the Paradise side, and it was just. It was a, a strenuous hike, but the views were just incredible. Yeah. It was fun, um, and it was a really good way to end that section of the trip. Yeah, and we were we got lucky. We were able to find a campsite for two nights in a row in Mount Rainier. I think we did three, we did three. nights, and that was the longest we'd ever been in one spot the entire trip. <laughs> so it, it felt like we're rolling into home. Like yeah. we were really I, yeah. excited. I think at that point we were we were ready to be done with this portion of the trip. We were we tired. We were tired. Um, the driving the Alaska Highway in the short amount of time because Joey's sister believes in love and had to get married. Uh, um, it was just a lot of driving. I think it, we were sitting in the car. We had done a lot of hiking. We'd been on the road. Up until that point, every couple of weeks we had been staying with friends. Yeah. And this was the first time since. J the for, June, no. Like the for last the, week of May, basically. Yeah, that we had stayed with someone, had like a real kitchen and all of those yeah. like luxuries of a home. And I think we were just, we were ready to, to come home and to, to have some time out of the van, to have some time to stretch our legs, do some laundry, like all of those things. Yeah. Um, so we had one more stop. We uh, parked the van at a friend. Um, from my childhood, one of my brother's friends growing up lives in Seattle, and we were able to park there because Joey dropped me off. I flew and worked the CrossFit Games, so now we're at August. August. In August, I flew to Wisconsin. I have worked uh, for CrossFit doing CrossFit Games production for a decade, if not more than that. Um, so I went and did that while Joey drove Clifford home on his own back to Colorado. It was fine. I listened to some <laughs> trashy murder mystery books. It was great. And all of August was just being home with family. Joey's sister got married. It was beautiful. All of your extended family came to town. Yeah. Um, it was just really fun to be back with, with our community and then also like do all of the annoying things that you don't do when you're on the road, like go to the dentist, go to the doctor, like get all of your annual checkups, all of the like mundane things that you don't think about when you like live in a, a yeah. normal life um, but when you're on the road you're like counting down the days until you can do those things yeah 
September. September. We you did? went too far. Did we do anything in September? No. September. <laughs> we were at home. We were at home. We, we had been on the road for almost five months. We had shot many, many national parks. And if you've been watching this channel, you know you haven't seen any of it <laughs> because we were sitting on it. So we have a backlog of like 11 terabytes of content to, to make videos and photos. Um, and so September was organizing files, getting all that stuff backed up on hard drives, um, making a plan for short form content. We we haven't really tackled the long form stuff yet, which is coming down the pipeline, so get yeah. excited. Um, so September was just like business, yeah. logistics. We were still resting. <laughs> October. Spooky season! October, we were back on the road. We had another national park to visit and that was a cruise to Glacier Bay. So we flew to Seattle, we met up with my parents who were joining us on the cruise um, and we hopped on Norwegian Cruise Line and did a seven day cruise that went to Glacier Bay, Ketchikan, Skagway. Victoria, Skagway, that's it. And Seattle. And this one, I, I've skipped the like most crucial thing, is if you are in America or know anything about America, we have a very dysfunctional government. And there was a shutdown looming. And literally two days before we boarded the ship, it was still up in the air on whether or not the government was shut down. Yeah. And the national park system closes immediately when that happens, which would... which had the potential to mean that our cruise ship would not go into Glacier Bay. And as like first world problem, selfish as it is, it was a big investment to get to Seattle, to book this cruise, to do yeah. all these things, and then to potentially not be able to go there. So I was stressing. And again, first world problem, such a blessing. Like I don't want to come off as like the snooty or ungrateful, but it, it was something that was like a very big <laughs> concern for me and the workers. And no one knew it. To, I called Glacier Bay National Park to be like, so what happens? Which is interesting though, because when we got to Glacier Bay National Park on the boat, turns out the cruise industry funds Glacier Bay, which is something I didn't know. No. So there was a chance that we may have been able to go anyway because the cruise foots the bill and yeah. funds the park. Um, so we'll never know at this point, <laughs> but we made it and it was really, really cool. And another unique way to visit a national park. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to build on that. I We raced go-karts <laughs> and Katie and I just, we just, just destroyed, we the, destroyed the children. They you didn't know what was expected. Like they didn't know what was gonna happen. And it was, we only did one race, but it was so fun to see my parents at the top. We had them filming for us because we couldn't bring uh, cameras and like selfie yourself going around the track. <laughs> but it was cool as we were just like destroying the field, seeing like my parents cheering for us. Go, go, go. It was just, it was really cool that this was the second opportunity that we got to experience a park with my family. And yeah. I, I think as an adult, you don't get so many opportunities to do like family vacations as you do growing up and to have two times so far, <laughs> it's done two times this year to, to get my family together and for them to support us and help us see this dream of seeing all the national parks was just really special and we had a good time. Agreed. Was, and the coastal towns of Alaska, really interesting, really, really cool. We took a train and Joey's in Skagway. <laughs> Joey's got, got train, <laughs> train interests, <laughs> so we had a good time. And we, Skagway was breathtaking. It yeah. was cool to go there because that's where we were gonna drive down yeah. to catch the plane and we got to see this town and be like, that's the highway we would have had to drive through the mountains as we were chugging along on our train. Um, but all of the shore excursions were, were really fun and just to get back to Alaska. Alaska's so, so special and yeah. I think it's, probably pretty underrated because when people think of traveling, at least if you're from the US, you're like, oh, I wanna go to Asia. Oh, I wanna go to Europe. And I don't think Alaska is really on the forefront of anyone's minds when they think of doing a really cool trip. Yeah. And it's incredible up there. It, yeah. it really is a top tier destination to visit. Yeah, Alaska is stunning in every way that you look at. I think it takes a very specific kind of person who wants to do that. Like you have to be outdoorsy in some way to go there. Well, because that's what you experience there. Because yeah. it's like small towns, beautiful nature. Yeah. And if you are into seeing mountains, seeing wildlife, that's just an, there's so much untouched land there that's protected that gives it this just raw and wild place to be. Yeah. And 
so thankful we got to go two times this year and hopefully yeah. again in the future because yeah. I really liked it. It took us 30 plus years to ever visit Alaska and we went back twice and like we're already talking about how to go back next year. <laughs> like that, like we've been to a lot of places across the world, but like Alaska is pulling us back. Yeah. There's something special. Yeah, we can't wait to go back. Yeah. So October, it didn't end there. We got back to Colorado. Um, we basically put a hiatus on the road trip. We needed to recoup costs. We needed to go through all of the stuff we shot. We didn't yeah. want to get back on the road without seeing what we're missing, what the holes are and what we're filming. We're trying to to share this journey with the internet and with you and, and, and without going through that stuff ahead of time, we would do a disservice to all of you, but also to us to be able to yeah. capture those memories. So we decided we are going to pause, pause. Uh, Glacier Bay would be our last national park of the year. Mm -hmm. We would have hit 29. So while not 63, it was still an accomplishment to do almost half. Yeah. Um, and now we're home and we got to go to Overland Expo, which we went to last year yeah. in the pre-building stages yeah and then to go back after having built a van and to see all that stuff and then go there for work was <laughs> even better yeah so much fun <laughs> um it's cool to see the way it shifted if anyone is in the overland community um for a while there especially when we were thinking about the van and then building it it was van life and then this year when we went it is overlanding in trucks yeah a lot fewer vans a lot fewer vans it's a big shift it went here. from <laughs> only sprinters last year to Mostly the majority transits. of them being transits yep. this year. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the vans going away for like the big earth roamer style trucks. Or the the toppers on a on a truck. And, and after having been on the road for five months, realizing the holes in the transit and the van life game of the accessibility to, yeah. to some more exciting roads and, and adventures, uh, it, it sparked some ideas. Yeah. Let's just say, let's just say that. <laughs> and more to come. November. Uh, November was one of our favorite productions that we've ever done. Like not only as like a production team, but as a couple. And we shot the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York City. I grew up watching the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade every single Thanksgiving. It was a state, it's on in the morning when you wake up on Thanksgiving while the turkey's cooking, while everyone's prepping all of the food for the get together. You watch the parade and that was something I did for 30 years of my life. I'm gonna subtract a few years because I don't remember. Um, <laughs> And then to be there, to stand amongst the balloons. I had seen the parade as a spectator when we were living in New York. My family came to visit a couple holidays. So I had seen the parade from behind the barricade in the crowds, but then to walk the route with the balloons, walking in front of the floats and like seeing it from that perspective was just like, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity that hopefully isn't just once in a lifetime. Yeah. But it was just one of those things that you gotta pinch yourself. It was really, really cool. Yeah, it was a very fun time. Plus we got to go back to New York and we ate at some of our favorite restaurants, which did not disappoint. Did not disappoint. It was fun to be back in the city. Um, I hadn't been back there since 2019 when I had previously lived there and then my family came in again and we got to do Thanksgiving together. So there, it could have been a time where we didn't get to be with any family on that holiday. And instead yeah. my parents flew in, my brother came, he lives in New Jersey. He came and watched the parade. We got to see him for a brief minute while we were working. And then we went into New Jersey and got to have dinner with him and his girlfriend and her family. And it was just, it was really cool it could have been a really sad time being away from our families and it ended up being another fun family trip. So three times in a year getting yeah. to do like a family vacation. And then we cut work and we went to Boston. Yeah, went to Boston. Got to hang out with one of my good college friends and his family's got three young boys. It was a blast. It was so fun. It was, it was so much fun. It was fun to step away. It was like not tied to any work at all. It was just getting to connect with friends. And I think that's been kind of a priority on this journey for this year. We're in the US, we're traveling all over the world. Our friends and our families are spread amongst the United States and you don't get to go around that often. So right. to be able to take advantage of this, to see your brother, to to meet up with my dad, then my parents, and then your mom, and yeah. all these places, see your other friend in Portland. We're like getting to reconnect with people that we haven't seen in years. And it's just been so special. And it was just another reminder of just to be, to be grateful. Yeah. Even though like this year has been stressful and we did all this stuff, but at the end of the day, we're, we're so fortunate. Yeah, we're so fortunate. It's been, it's been a very stressful year, like Katie said, but it's also been one of the most memorable 
periods in our lives I think yeah. we'll ever have. Yeah. Yeah. And we we're we're ending it on a really good note with the that job just being like the capstone of the year. Yeah. Um, and then we get to December. December. We got back from spending the week out in New York and New Jersey and, and Boston. We were on a high. We were feeling good. So great. And you can never trust that. You can, yeah. <laughs> if you're feeling too good, something's <laughs> coming. Uh, we picked up the van from my sister's house and we heard a lot of water sloshing around. And we look at the back and our water filter exploded. Uh, it got really cold when we were gone. There and we was a hadn't, little... We hadn't winterized. Yeah, we hadn't we, winterized it. We didn't expect the temperatures to drop. Colorado is notorious for not getting that cold in like the November time. So yeah. when we left for this trip, we weren't worried. And none of the forecasts really showed a huge freeze either. So yeah. we were just like, we'll be good. We'll get back. We were still like finishing up organizing the van. Like it's no big deal. It was a big deal. We <laughs> blew out our entire water system. It was like... So heartbreaking to go from the high of what a wonderful time doing this job and then coming back and realizing we made the, like, one of the bigger mistakes you can make when you have a van. Yeah. Or any, any, uh off-road vehicle that you live in. So yeah. I think that was just really disappointing. We know better, we knew better, and we still made the mistake. So it's gonna be a costly repair that at this point we're just ignoring. We emptied the tank, we pulled off the filters, we haven't put more water in the system to check if anything else broke. I think we're just kind of, like I said, kind of ignoring the problem. We fixed what was the emergent stuff and the leak, and yeah. then we'll tackle that. Knowing we're not getting back on the road, um, we're gonna get the rest of the system cleared out um, now that it's nice again, and then we'll rebuild it when we re rebuild it. Yeah. But it's like, <laughs> don't, it was not something we wanna tackle again in, in, in the end of the year. We yeah. just, we don't wanna think about it. But for the rest of December, we are hanging out with family, seeing friends, celebrating the holidays, trying to get through some of our backlog, planning for what's coming next year and the year beyond, um, and just playing video games. Just like, kind of relaxing <laughs> because we know life on the road is hectic and busy and all those things. So we're gonna just make the most of the, the slower pace now because we have some big lofty plans for next year and plans for content. I think all of you who follow us and are thirsting for the actual videos of these parks are gonna be really excited because we're gonna be putting that content out. We're going to be making new content and getting kind of caught back up to live um, yeah. and getting to share more in the moment stuff with all of you. So if you've stuck around this long, we are very grateful to have you here. We're grateful that you've watched, that you are hopefully invested in our journey just like we are. and. If you want to stick around, you can find us on so many social media channels at Katie and Joe on the go here. And also on our website, Joey did an amazing job revamping our website. That was another one of the business things we've done since coming home. It looks incredible. So please go check it out. Read some of the blogs. They're interesting. They're fun. They give a bit more detail about what we've been doing this whole time. So if you're curious about national parks, travel, anything, hop on the website, send us an email, say hi. We also have Patreon. Patreon people get postcards and shirts and mugs. Sweaters. And swag. Just join the crew, hang out with us. You get some behind the scenes stuff. Joey does a really good job sharing more real time content yeah. um, from with that community. And yeah, I think there's a lot of value there, especially moving forward as we start to release some of our learnings and, and maps and digital stuff, TBD, get excited. That is it for this video. This is definitely going to be probably the longest video on this channel, well over 30 plus minutes. Um, but we really wanted to fill you guys in. We know that there's a lot of experiences that we've had over the last year that we haven't done a great job of sharing with you guys. We're getting back. We're Stick getting, around. We're Stick getting with caught us up. <laughs> because we did. We did a lot of really good capturing of the moment and these places are so beautiful we can't wait to share it with you so stick around like and subscribe bye